Bonjour tout le monde, bienvenue sur HCFR Gamescom 2019. Aujourd'hui on teste Wasteland 3 avec deux de ses créateurs. Hi guys, how are you today? I'm very good, how are you? Good, well, really good, really good. And you? Yeah, excited to be here at Gamescom. Yeah, can you introduce yourself first? What's yeah. your role in the game? Uh, I'm Brian Fargo, so I'm the studio head uh, and I'm the one that uh, started this whole thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the game I'm director. I'm Tim Campbell, game director on Wasteland 3. Okay, thanks. Uh, we are really happy to be here. And uh, uh, just to begin, like for someone who doesn't know the series, like Wasteland 3, how would you just introduce the game, like the story or maybe uh, everything which would be interesting for someone who doesn't know anything? <laughs> yeah, fantastic. It's an ex Wasteland 3 is an expansive party-based role-playing game it's set in a post-apocalyptic frozen wasteland. Um, in it, you can players can build a party of characters, so these rangers, and they can explore the the wintry hellscape of Colorado, and they can solve uh, problems, they can explore, they can interact with people, they can fight tactical combat, and they can do all of this their own way in an RPG that really takes their choices and their playstyle and reacts to it. Okay, excellent. And uh, so you, you were talking just before about the fact that you were just approached by Microsoft this last year. And uh, what's different um, uh, since the, the Wasteland 2, like uh, for money or things like this, is it easier to, to realize the game, achieve it? Yeah, well, so yeah, so as you said, Microsoft purchased our, company, per <laughs> purchased our company last year, which has been awesome, right? They, they, they've come in and they've trusted us and said, Let's see what we can do to make your games even better. And Wasteland 3 was really the first uh, beneficiary of that. And so we've had access to their user research labs, their localization departments, their QA departments, and more money. So we've been able to put um, more, more art, more programmers, more everything. And so we've really taken the visual levels, the audio levels, the special effects levels, every part of this product has improved because of it. So it's been a real blast for us because I always describe it as like, I always felt like we were in a band, that we knew we were missing a couple of band members and we were making the best music we could, but we knew we were missing a few uh, you know, key members and now we have everything. And I think the, the, uh, the product really shows uh, with, with, uh, with the acquisition of, of what that extra help gets us. So we can uh, talk about a uh, really improvement about support and everything, like uh, also to realize the game. So how many people do you have in your studio now? Well, total in the studio, we have a little over 80 people in the studio. Uh, most, of more, most of them are on Wasteland 3. Okay, most of them are Wasteland 3. And uh, just to talk about the game uh, itself, like uh, what's changing since the last episode? Like uh, you were talking just before about the fact it uh, might be a little bit more open, like just maybe you could give us some light. Yeah, the game has changed in a lot of ways and in some ways it hasn't changed at all. We're starting with what fans really liked about Wasteland 2, the core of it, and then we've really tried to build that out in a lot of different ways. So the core of the game from Wasteland 2 is that you, you build up a party of characters with tactical combat and you can go around and, and explore a world with choice and consequence. We've kind of taken the root of all of that and the tone and the mood that we have, and we've placed it in a new setting in Colorado. We've taken it away from the arid deserts of Wasteland 2, the types of settings you might have seen in Mad Max or The Road or things like that, and we put it in a brand new setting which gives you new challenges, new threats, new things to overcome. And we've opened up the world map. We've put a lot of effort in production value. We've put a lot of effort into content. And you can build up a vehicle and drive this vehicle around the world. And it opens up. And a lot of studios would probably hold your hands or guide you with training wheels. And that's not how InXile 
uh, develops games. We put players into this world, we let them go, and we let them explore it the way that they want to do it. So they can do missions in different orders, they can interact with factions differently, they can kill whoever they want in the game, even key story NPCs, and the game will react uh, to their choices and it will unfold differently based on how they're playing the game. So we build a lot of content that any one player is not going to see. With a game this big, it's 50 plus hours, and any one player playing through on, a, on one, one path will not see a lot of that stuff. But overall, what it lets people do is play the game their way and make their own choices, and then the game reacts to that to give them a, a pretty unique experience. Okay, so every path is different, so can we expect different endings too? Yeah, absolutely. There are a lot of endings along the way. There are some endings that are, are short. You can end the game in the first five or ten hours, right? But you can also play the game all the way to its completion. And along the way, the choices that you make, they accumulate. And the endings, we have dozens and dozens of different endings that all reflect the choices you've made along the way. Okay. So, yeah, there's a, there's a big variety there. Really, Players will play this game how they want to play, and the world's going to react and then end differently. And we have a lot of different outcomes that I think will, will surprise and, and entertain players. Okay, excellent. No spoiler today, but just for side quest, is it also uh, changing uh, endings and, uh, and the main campaign? Like everything is connected, side quest and main quest? Yeah, it, it, well, not everything's connected, but um, much of what you do will affect the direct ending. But there are also a lot of things that are optional. Areas that you might want to just wander off a path and go off-roading in the wilderness through the forest. And there are going to be things that you can find there that do have impact and do have consequences, but are totally isolated from the main storyline of it. We really want players to... Um, experience the game their own way. So in effect, they're telling their own story based on the order uh, that they encounter things, the, the, the direction that they go, and, and the, their route through the game. Okay, excellent for this short moment, but it's a, a good one. <laughs> Thanks for everything, guys. And uh, the game will be released when? In uh, 2020? Uh, we're just saying spring for right now. We'll start yeah. to nail down the date as we get closer. Okay, okay, so not today. <laughs> Okay, thanks for everything, and uh, if you like this video, uh, think to follow us on Ashley Fair. Bye!